Nine out of 10 people in North America find recycling more confusing than investing in the stock market, filing their taxes, or assembling IKEA furniture. Welcome to Startup Build, the show where we discuss what it's like to build a tech startup and a startup ecosystem in a small city. I'm your new producer, Ariel Delorier, and our host is Dan Gold. Today, we're talking with Sam Dietrich of Prairie Robotics. Sam created a positive change in the world to make recycling simple. Inspired by Innovation Saskatchewan's challenge to find out how technology can be used to monitor the amount of solid waste generated and disposed of in the province. Prairie Robotics used artificial intelligence to estimate the weight of the waste entering landfills to capture data in real time to automatically generate waste reports. After working with more and more waste-based companies, they found the need was using AI at the source to resolve issues at the household level. We talked with Sam about the importance of recycling and how it's one of the most positive environmental impacts that we can do individually, how he was able to make the change to help us in present time, and what's in store for Prairie Robotics. Welcome to Startup Home. Startup Home is brought to you by Innovation Place and Martin Charlton Communications. Sam, the the snow is starting to fall outside my window. I don't think you can see it because it's so overexposed, but winter is here. I need a good news story. I need to <laughs> warm up with the feeling and the sense that there's positivity here in Saskatchewan, as there always is. But today it's your turn to bring a smile to my face. So Sam, tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me about Prairie Robotics. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds good. I'll start with Prairie Robotics. Uh, we are focused on what we believe is a, a positive initiative, positive uh, change in the world. It's to make recycling simple. Um, so nine out of 10 people in North America find recycling more confusing than investing in the stock market, filing their taxes, or assembling IKEA furniture. And um, for anyone who has audio only, uh, everyone here in the studio is smiling and nodding along. So um, this is a familiar experience with all of us. Uh, and what that results in is about a third of what goes into a blue bin is actually contamination. It shouldn't be there. It degrades recyclables. It prevents us from really uh, having a circular economy. Um, and it can even endanger the safe and healthy, uh, safe and um, health of people at the recycling facilities that receive this material. What we do at Prairie Robotics is we install an IoT platform on recycling collection trucks. We use machine learning to identify contamination, and then we provide targeted education back to residents so they can understand, oh, I shouldn't be putting my greasy pizza box in there. I shouldn't be putting literal garbage in there. I shouldn't be um, putting, you know, clamshell packaging, depending on the municipality. Uh, so we're essentially introducing a feedback loop uh, into the waste utility, which has never been there before. Okay. We'll talk, I'll do a follow up on that shortly, but sure. I also want to highlight a little bit about you, Sam. Um, How did you even get into this? Where does the interest come from? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, so a bit about myself, born and raised in Regina. I went to the U of R and uh, I completed an engineering degree, majored in industrial systems, double minored in software and electronics. Um, worked, finished school, worked for a couple startups uh, here in Regina from uh, Vivo Application Studios, which was uh, recently acquired by Converge Technology Solutions and Dot Technology Corp, which was acquired by Raven uh, Industries uh, before settling into the waste management industry, I guess. And the reason uh, we got settled, started into that is uh, Innovation Saskatchewan put out a, an innovation challenge. How can technology be used to monitor waste disposed of in Saskatchewan? And we developed and commercialized a solution, which was applying AI at landfills uh, through that uh, product, we met more people in the waste industry, made more connections. Um, and what we found is, well, people liked what we had developed. What they really wanted was AI at the source. It's too late at the time waste is being received at the landfills. People are looking for how can we actually apply this to the household level? And that's what we've settled on now with our current product. 
So I'm interested in your journey from from what interested you and this opportunity came up with the spec that went out. At any point, did you go, I had dreams of working on this and now I realize, you know, one man's trash is another man's gold type <laughs> thing over here. And it's kind of, hmm, actually, was, was there a moment where you went, I'm not really interested in that or was it always... I've got a mind for the technology and I can apply it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think it's kind of a combination of the two. Um, from the technology side, myself and my co-founder, Stephen Mika, we're both engineers and we're really interested in um, how can you use machine learning? How can you use big data? And then also how can you make a positive environmental impact? Uh, like most engineers, we were very attached to the first landfill product we created. And we just thought it was simply the greatest thing anyone had ever done. Um, so we were somewhat blinded by our own uh, naivety towards this product. And um, we built it in collaboration uh, with the city of Regina and Bouchard, Saskatchewan. Uh, we had interest from other municipalities. And from our point of view, we thought, well, we'll finish building this thing and then everybody will want to get on board. What ended up happening is we finished building it and the interest stayed about lukewarm beyond the partners that we had developed it with. When we switched and really started to focus on recycling contamination and applying AI at the source, uh, the interest has just skyrocketed. So that's really, um, really helped us move over to this area because there's just more people interested in working with us, hearing about the technology and suggesting additional um, additional use cases for it, I should say. So I'm, I'm intrigued because society being what society is, we have the situation when, you know, people don't necessarily want to be told what to do. And, um, you know, not in my backyard. I don't want a new development being built. I don't want this there. And, you know, the things that make society work. No, just I've got my land not too close. That's one thing. Second thing is... In my hometown, Bournemouth in the United Kingdom, um, at one point we were going to have monitoring units placed on the bins to weigh all the trash from the different bins to to work out, you know, how you know just by weight how much people were putting in the bin and recycling and the green waste and the brown bin as well. But I can't remember <laughs> what brown bin was for. Okay, um, yeah. But we have four bins back at my place in England, and. Um, the resistance from the public about being told what to do was enormous. Right. So tell me and explain to me, whilst this is good for the environment, whilst it's good for operators and people further down the stream, how do you deal with adoption and education of the consumers that they don't go, well, stop telling me what to do, I've got busy lives? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think um, it's kind of a sign of the times that – people today understand climate change isn't just an existential threat. It's something that we're facing every day. Like it's, uh, it's no longer 20 years away. It's something that's actually having impacts today. Um, and, you know, I think when you look at other utilities, you look at your natural gas, you look at your electricity, you look at your water usage. These are all things that are metered and are monetized and, um, Growing up as a kid, I think everybody had the experience of leaving the lights on and their dad getting mad at them. There's th there's no reason that waste should be the one utility exempt from this. And if we uh, really understand that um, we have one Earth, although SpaceX is making some promising uh, leaps, we, we really have one planet here. And... Uh, we, we need to stop using as much resources as we are, and we need to reuse and uh, recycle them in better ways. So explain to me, when you went through the steps of this process, where did the, after the pivot and, and looking at the other end, that feedback that came from the industry, mm. how did you take that information back and go, okay, we're now going to model how we can actually apply this to the real world? Um, 
Yeah, I, I guess there's really not much. There's no there's no secret to that. It was basically just people asking us to change the product and apply it to recycling trucks. And that's exactly what we did. So taking that then from the point of view of then there needs to be an education piece and communication that then mm, layers right. on top of this. How does how did that come about and, and putting that together? Did, who did you consult with or, or build that out with? Right. Yeah. So the um, you're on a very important point. The AI is really just one aspect of this. The feedback and the education that we're engaging with in citizens is critical in how that's communicated. Um, with every municipality we're working with today, it's a collaborative process. Uh, they have marketing and communications teams that uh, have expertise in engaging with the public. Um, and have a lot of good insight into what works and what doesn't work. We've also uh, worked with designers um, as well to develop templates and uh, taken, you know, a lot of best practices uh, from industry and from other companies. Opower is a good example that has applied comparative behavior analytics to energy utilities and woven that into our solution. Uh, and something that's really exciting about our platform is that we have the means of uh, A-B testing different educational materials so you can, you know, engage with 100 households in one neighborhood, 100 households in another neighborhood, and every second house can be uh, sent a different piece of material. You can look at the impact before you scale this up across a city. Um, so it's, I don't claim that we have all the answers, but we've built a solution that allows you to be highly iterative. So in terms of rollout, where are you on, on the journey and the scale? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're working with municipalities uh, across Western Canada. Uh, the ones that I can speak about publicly are the city of Regina, where we've uh, just finished a four month paid pilot project with them inspecting roughly 2000 or 10,000 households over the last four months. Um, and what's really been exciting about that project is over 70% of households have immediately improved after receiving their first piece of education. Uh, and we've seen an immediate reduction of 20% of contamination just from that uh, first piece of educational material as well. So you've been through this process, you've had the first iteration of, of what your organization did, you're into this second space now, and I'm sure there's, there's you know, elements that will be tested, improved, rolled out, and it's an evolving uh, or a process of evolution. When, when do you get to that point where you go, okay, we can now go to big municipal shows in different territories and go, this is our solution? Or is it a case that you actually pitch directly to them on a on a one-by-one -one basis? How, what does the marketing of your product and service look like? Yeah, you're uh, hitting the nail right on the head. We're working in an industry that's uh, really trade show based, conference based. Um, you know, there's a couple big waste management conferences every year. Um, waste Expos in Las Vegas, which we'll be attending next spring. So, you know, we we would be at those today. We would have been at them over the last year had uh, the worldwide COVID pandemic not sidelined a number of those events. But we've got a, a really uh, busy conference schedule coming up this spring, summer. So uh, we'll be marketing the solution at mass there. And yeah, we are getting a lot of interest from uh, municipalities who are reading about our platform and want to understand how they could integrate with us today. Okay, so here's the dream, the five-year dream. Mm -hmm. Is it a case of, here's our global solution, we're rolling out everywhere, or is it a case of a turnkey solution that you give to or sell to and then license to other providers in other countries? What What's that model? Or is it a case of, we've built it, we're now going to sell it, we're off to something else? I mean, I don't want you to say anything <laughs> you shouldn't, but yeah. what's the, give us five years. Um, five years... So the, the long-term goal is to maximize impact, to re reduce recycling contamination, to reduce the amount of waste, to accelerate, accelerate us towards a circular economy. Uh, 
whether we have to do that by going direct to every municipality like we are today, whether we can enter into licensing options, you know, we don't truly have a preference on either side of it. It's really just looking at how can we maximize impact in the shortest amount of time. Everyone has a notebook and different people have different things in their notebooks, but invariably people who are ideas people have a section in the back and the back is the ideas not yet for now, but I'd love to get to at some point. Yeah. In the back of your notebook, are the ideas relating to this product or is there something that's completely unrelated that is a is a dream wish product that maybe some point 10, 15 years down the road, it's like, okay, I'm doing this. This is very successful. It's doing very well. But I'm really interested in that as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, two-part two part answer, I guess. Um, you know, we've got a really a highly technical team at Prairie Robotics today. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, back of notebook ideas for the current product, I should say, uh, which I unfortunately can't speak about publicly today, but maybe I can be back on the podcast in a year from now. And you, you would I, be more than welcome. <laughs> we can we can outline uh, progress to those ideas. Um, personally, yeah, I, I also have a my own back of notebook ideas and. Um, industries that I, I think could be uh, disrupted uh, that I would I would like to see um, you know they're all they're all much bigger bigger swings if you will uh, if you look at Canada I think there's a couple industries um, airline industry the telecommunications industry that uh, have a consolidation of power and I don't know if that's a great uh, setup for consumers today but uh, yeah. Besides saying that I would like to be working in those industries, I don't think there's much else to know. I, I like the idea that actually a, a part that I take away from this is the point of doing things for other people, doing things for society, making a difference, a positive change, not just here's a solution, let's make some money, you know, <laughs> sell it off, move on to something else. And there is nothing wrong with that. But actually it tells you about the the principle of the person when you speak to them and that's not the first thing that they say i'm very excited one of the other things i'm very excited about is when people take technology they build it for an industry and then they look at that 90 degree over there and they go "Ooh, it could apply to that as well applying an existing technology or a new technology that's now borne out and proved itself here what could it do over there what could it achieve over there so that also is very, very exciting. Sam, I do welcome you to come back on to Startupville. I'm very excited to see what that next, what those bits in the notebook are mm. further down the road. If people wanted to find out more information about Prairie Robotics and maybe get in touch with you, how could they do that? Uh, you can find us online, www.prairierobotics.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at Sam Philosophies. Sam, thank you so much for joining us here on Startupville. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Startupville is brought to you by Innovation Place, helping grow the tech sector in Saskatchewan, Canada, and is produced in partnership with Martin Charlton Communications at wetellyourstories.ca. Our show is produced by me, Ariel Delorier, and our host, Dan Gold. Our theme music is for GG Riggs and Reactor Productions. Find out more about us and our guests at innovationplace.com slash startupville. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter at StartupBillPod. Remember to subscribe and review wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us rise up the ranks. See you next time on Startup Build.